Hello my friends, welcome again on my video channel. Today we will continue our work on the Canva TS700S. First I will show you the effect I described in the last footage, in the last video about the display, the display error which appeared suddenly after I swapped all electrolytic capacitors in the power supply. I hope there is no uh, real technical coincidence, but one never knows. First the effect. And now I switch on, have a look at the display. You've seen that. Switch off again. And now... Maybe a short indication, but I'm not sure. Wait a little bit longer. Nothing. This happened after one day without power supply, without switching it on. So I really don't understand in the moment what's going on in the display. The counter unit, this part here, this PCB, it's connected to the display via this big shielded cable. There are a lot of wires inside. This uh, display is a seven segment display. Uh, with a multiplex configuration. Here are only five electrolytics to be swapped. They are prepared. Let's start. All new electrolytics in the counter unit are in place now. Here and here, here and here. Totally five. Where is the fifth one? Here. One, two, three, four, five. And now I will reinstall this unit. And now let's have a look at the vacuum uh, fluorescence display. This is this one. It's a, a seven segment matrix. We have here the uh, segments A, B, C, D, E, F, G. These are the anodes. And the grids are from 1, 2, 3, up to 7. So the multiplexing is done by the grid. It's switched from this grid to this grid to this grid. And uh, when the right uh, grid is selected, then the segments are driven by these transistors in the correct way. So that we have the correct segment in the correct position. And then they switch to the next uh, grid, which is the next set of anode, one grid controls uh, seven anodes for the seven segments. We can see it here. So when you switch from grid to grid, then you switch from se uh, seven segment combination to the next combination and so on. And this is done with these transistors and these transistors. The supply voltage is in case of activation, the grid and the anode has plus five volt. And here we have the minus 24 volt which uh, uh, and, uh, disables the indication. So when there is no positive voltage here and here, then the segment is dark or the digit is dark. And when the uh, voltage goes positive into plus five volt, and also the corresponding segments are going positive here, then the uh, indication is lit. But it's necessary that the cathode and the heater here, which is also minus uh, 24 volt is always negative on this uh, negative voltage otherwise there is no current flowing so the display error may be caused by a faulty filament each uh, tube has a filament they are in series maybe if there is a problem of the minus 24 volt are here but not uh, arriving at the uh, display i will check the voltages First, I will focus on these voltages here, whether we have the right input to the display and then uh, focus on the other voltages. Here we have two grids, grid one and two, yellow and blue line. I only have two hands, sorry, I cannot show more, but we see a level of plus five and minus 24 volt. We have 10 volt per division considering the probe. And when I go to the next output, 
You see a different location, so the multiplexing can be seen when I take grid one as reference. So I can go from, from one, one grid to the other. I, I checked all grids, grid per grid. So uh, the control, the grid voltage is okay. And now let's go to the seven segments. Now this is the control of the seven segments. You see here minus 24 volt feed in from the power supply, that's okay. And then we have one segment. It is uh, not triggered perfectly. Let's go to the next segment. But we see there are also pulses between plus 5 volt and minus 24 volt. So as I see the output of the uh, counter unit is okay. And the problem can only be in the display itself as discussed before. Let's have a look into the schematic of the filament supply. F1, F2 is the filament connection to the display. There should be, according to the manual, a square wave or two square waves in phase opposition. Amplitude approximately, what should they have, uh, 3 volt, 3.8 volt peak peak. But the most important thing, the potential, uh, the voltage of these two connections are clamped by this Sina diode. It is, it's a 6 volt diode. We have here minus 24 and then we have here plus 6 volt more than minus 24. This is minus 18 volts of so the center of this uh, transformer here is clamped to minus 18 volt. Not more, not more positive, because then this diode should get conductive. So we should have this in mind. Minus 18 volt and two square waves. Let's have a look what we have. The two channels of the scope are connected here to F1, F2. On the PSU, that's the output. That's it. And let's see what we have. We have 2 volt per division, so we have 3, 2, 4, this is 1, uh, 2, it is 3.5 volt peak peak, that's okay. When we have 2 volt per division, but the voltage level is not minus 18, as we expected, it's plus, plus 3, plus 4. So the filament, which is actually the cathode, in the display is positive, very positive. It should be negative. So I'm sure this is the reason for the problem now, because this level should be shifted down and then we would have a negative cathode voltage and positive grid and anode and then we would have a display. In the moment we have no display because these two voltages are too, uh, too positive and therefore the the display or the vacuum tube in the display, as we could uh, see this, is blocked and indicating nothing. Next step is I measure the voltage across D12 cathode and anode, where we should measure minus 24 and minus 18 volt. So let's have a look. At the cathode, we have minus 26. And at the anode, minus 25. So there is a voltage stop. It is not exactly 6 volt, it's a little bit less. I measure the voltage stop. And the voltage stop is nothing, bad contact. Why do I not measure a voltage stop across this diode? This means there is no current flowing. I try to measure at connection point J of the transformer and this is 
marked with J. And here we measure 4 volt. So this should be minus 18 volt. And when I go to the cathode, I measure minus 20. This voltage seems to be uh, with a very high impedance because there is no connection from here to here. So I cannot measure voltage stop from here to here over the diode. Seems there's a problem from the transformer from here to here. I fear I have to take out the power supply again and to check the connections of the transformer. Do you see this? This is a diode and there is no solder connection. It's not good. I have not seen this when I soldered in this capacitor. It looks it looks rather good, but it is not good. There was never a solder. Maybe there was here at the end of the wire some connection to to the trace, but here not, so I have to resolder it. I think that's a problem. Here we have the center contact of the uh, transformer. This is okay. This is soldered properly. This is a connection to the Cena diode, but here is no connection. Why didn't I see this? I was focused on the electrolytic here. It looks good at the first glance, but second view shows me the problem. Okay. The PSU is in place again. Now we have the display. Just for confirmation, I'm measuring the voltages now. Now with the Cena diode. Is it wrong? Minus 18 volt as expected. We have 24. So the voltage drop across the diode. I try to measure it now. Five dot nine six. That's okay. And just for confirmation, I will measure the filament heating again with the scope to see whether we have the negative level now, but obviously we have it because the display is okay now. We have 10 volt per division. Now we have minus 20 volt and the amplitude is 3 volt again. When I would go to AC coupling, we would see the full amplitude as, as before, but now we have the negative. Uh, level as expected, so the cathode of the vacuum fluence uh, fluorescence display is now negative, what we expect and what we need for a good picture. After the successful repair of the display, then we can focus on the uh, next board. It's the generator unit. <coughs> I will make the generator unit as the next one because there are many electrolytic caps inside you see here and here some electrolytics totally we have 27 and one tantalum and this is the biggest task so when this is done the rest is not so big 15 okay in the fm if unit but in general the 27 here are the next task luckily it seems to be rather easy to take out this unit it, as I see, it can be flipped out when I unscrew it, so I can take it out this way and get access to the solder connections. This wire, hmm, maybe one or two wires have to be unsoldered. Could be. Not, not a big problem in general. I don't show you the, <coughs> the whole procedure in the uh, next PCBs. Makes no sense to show you how to swap electrolytics. Only in case that there are uh, special problems arising, as we had now with the display. In this case, I will show it to you, but the uh, swapping of electrolytics itself is not so exciting. So I don't show it. I could flip out the board. It's rather easy. The generator board, there are two 
shieldings have to be removed because some of the electrolytics are under these shields. And while I was looking around, I saw this. This red wire is only wrapped around the pin, but not soldered. I can remove it, I think, rather easily. I have to resolder it. Okay, but first I will start with the electrolytic caps. Now we are at the end of part 3 of the series about the Kenwood TS700S line. Besides the swapping of electrolytics, there will be, as I assume, also some other work. Of course, a complete realignment of this transceiver is necessary. When this job is done, maybe swapping of some trimmer resistors. Some of them look a little bit dirty and maybe corroded, I'm not sure. The S meter has not a, a good alignment, as we can see. The zero point is not set correctly. Can be caused by a faulty electrolytic or by a bad trim resistors or someone tampered with it, I don't know. Anyhow, stay tuned, stay healthy, see you on this channel.